This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Hello, and welcome to Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm still Cami Chaos, and we're still joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. And on the couch, we have Dana and John. Hello. Hello. And in the studio audience, they can't reach the microphone, but we have Jarvatron and right in movement. They can, they can get to the mic later. Yeah. We'll get them on camera later. Troublemakers. <laughs> it's a studio full of troublemakers, I can tell. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you haven't been reading the chat room. And you've been saying? Well, the troublemakers, <laughs> apparently, then they... Troublemakers. Which camera do I have? Don't go all Brian Westbrook on me right now, okay? I miss Brian. Okay. He hasn't been here in a while. What do we want to do on After Hours tonight? There are so many things that... There are so many avenues that we could go down. And my brain tells me not to, but... I think we'll dedicate the entire hour to Wolfram Alpha. See, every time... And I think and only someone, Ed will remain in the chat room. I think, I think <laughs> what's going to happen is this. No. You're going to say Wolfram Alpha, and then I'm going to do the same thing that somebody else said. This is something on Twitter, that every time they hear the word Wolfram, they think of Wolfram and Hart. I think of, like, World War Two. Do you know what Wolfram of, and like, Hart is? Of, like, some, like, tank commander. Does anyone in the room yeah. know what Wolfram and Hart is? I, I do. I got okay. I got <laughs> Yeah, no, I was... You gotta grab the mic. Solidarity. Angel third season. Solidarity, Aaron. Thing. Yeah, no, yeah. Sure. Okay, Wolfram and Hart was the big, evil, evil corporation on the television show Angel, which was oh. about the vampire with the soul. Hmm. Yeah. I did not see that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. And now because of that, I watch Bones. Okay, all right. Oh, Aaron, are you going to tell us? Are you going to educate us? Am I going to educate you on, yeah. on Wolfram and Hart? I would like to be educated, Aaron. Okay, well, see, yeah, Wolfram and Hart was the okay. angel third season, like, thing where the angel crew took over the other company, and then it kind of went downhill because the stories got kind of boring, but... But it wasn't even really a company. Yeah, no, it was really more, like demons and stuff like that it was it was fun there was there was a lot of fun it was a secret there. underworld plot to take over the earth basically oh mm. yeah okay I, I, I missed that yeah. and that's why anytime they say wolfram i always immediately think it's evil and bad and who started we should on that stop show? it um david boreanis boreanis is that how you say yeah, it david yeah boreanis. and uh, occasionally oh. uh uh the girl from buffy the vampire slayer would come over and be buffy on the show oh. and uh and Charisma Carpenter. You can put the mic up it. closer. You can. You right. I, you can I'm, get I'm really trying, friendly. I'm trying, think, I'm trying to think of what the you can get actor Robert who played it. Spike's yeah. name was. Oh, James Marsters. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, him. That's the one. <laughs> he's, he's pretty. Aren't you glad you're part of this conversation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you after hours was just a problem. <clears throat> I, I feel out of it that I never saw that show. Though. Yeah, not, not a single time. <laughs> but, but you, you know, were working with Norman Lear, right? You yeah. were saying. So uh, when I first started, yeah, and I worked there for seven years. But we had all those, those classics, <laughs> well, all in the family, and mm -hmm. one day at a time, different oh, strokes. Yeah. Then we branched off into some really song, good but I won't shows do that like to you. Silver Spoons. Did they do Carter Country? Silver Spoons. Man. No, no we had like Jeffersons. <laughs> the Jeffersons. Yeah, yeah. yeah moving on. Yeah. 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 I used to get a That's ride classic. from. Um, Oh, what was the actress's name? Because she just passed away. Leona. Um, um, no, the other no. one who was their neighbors. Um, oh, um. And, oh, God, what, she's uh, Lenny Kravitz's start, mom. Starts with an R. Yeah, yeah. in real life she was Lenny Kravitz's yeah. mom. And I, I can't remember her name, but she used to be really nice. And when it would be really rainy or something, and I'd be in the front lot, and they had, I only had like a little golf cart. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like the low man totem pole when they started. But she would give me a ride in her car. She was really nice. <laughs> so cool <laughs> and i feel bad i can't remember her name but yeah, the chat room will help us out i think hopefully i think we discussed this earlier there are only so many names that I you know. can retain you That's can remember true. all the faces you want to that is so true but yeah i always feel really kind of justified whenever i meet someone else that says that because i can't 
I can't keep that many names in my head. No. I can remember you, and just because I don't know your name doesn't mean I don't remember you. Exactly. It I just know. means I. It's not. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where you can just come up with pet names for everybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just start calling everybody sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I was growing up, there was a, a mom up the street, and she called everyone love, and. Mm -hmm. I um, so I said to my mom, oh, Mrs. Allison is so great. She calls us. She always calls me, oh, love, how are you? And she said, oh, for God's sakes, that's because she can't remember any of your names. <laughs> and now I totally get that. <laughs> she was right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, John, we've met you before. Y yeah. Because you brought sausage to the sausage the fest. The sausage fest, yeah. And that was quite an evening. Yes, um, it was. The beginning fairly clear <laughs> we, we, we should mention that the sausage fest was about sausage and not yeah, men. it was true. actually about sausage that's and true. not men and and actually it can mean many things the cooking yeah. the cooking <laughs> and then eating of sausage right in movements yeah. over there going yeah 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 you don't want to be googling <laughs> sausage <laughs> no you don't you will not come up with the event that we met at you'll come up with something else entirely this entire evening is thanked to that sausage fest, but it's that sausage fest and not the one okay. you'll find on Google. I, I do want to yeah. say, um, Morgan PDX, uh, Roxy Roker. Oh, yeah, that's, thank you. I, I knew it was a, with an R. Well, thank knew, you, Morgan. Somebody said Esther Raleigh. I was like, no, 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 okay. different show. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, it was Roxy Roker. Lenny Kravitz's mom yeah. in yeah. real life. Yeah. There you go. But now we're really now back to we're sausage derailed. fest. I want to talk about the sausage because I didn't. I got to discuss this with you very briefly. You brought seafood sausage. I did at, at the. It's at the not request. what you normally no, make. Yeah, not. I'd never made it before, and it was mm -hmm. at the request of Pete. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, honestly, I wish I'd brought sausage that I was more familiar with. Mm -hmm. Seafood sausage is a tricky thing. It wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad, but it. It was, I, and everyone I think had to taste it because it was seafood sausage. And how was, often do you have seafood sausage? Yeah, it's but, true. Yeah, not very often. But my normal sausage that I would have brought would have would have been better. Yeah, yeah. So, next year. What do you what? I like the seafood sausage. Yeah, he really did. <laughs> he really liked the seafood. It was sausage. interesting. Not something you normally. So what kind of sausage eat, would you good. normally well, make? Pork. A pork sausage. Yeah, so salami is what I, I've mm. been making. Um, and when you get a half a pig to make salami, there's a lot left over, and yeah. that gets made into fresh sausage. Yeah. So we, we always have a freezer full of mm. Italian and different flavors of sausage. Next year, I'm it's bringing the Soylent thing. Green sausage to <laughs> yeah. this party. I don't think you're invited next mm. year. Those little smokies are made of people. <laughs> no. I think you've Sorry. given him way too much advance warning and you will not be attending. <laughs> it's, it's just, you never know. You might have a you know neighbor he doesn't like or something. I don't know. <laughs> You're going to get Pete in trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pete's neighbors are wonderful. How do you know? You didn't meet the neighbor. He hates know. his neighbor. <laughs> So how anyway. do you guys know Pete? How did you... <laughs> Wolfman? How do you know Pete? <laughs> how do we know? We know him because um, of the internet. He's a internet. fan of the show. We know Pete because of Actually. the internet. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he, he, uh, uh, we've met him, yeah, on the internet and um, at various events. And he's actually... Uh, He's written on his blog about Strange of Life, so he's mm -hmm. a big yeah. fan of the show. Well, Pete, Great. if you're watching, hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's in the chat room tonight, but... Uh, I'm trying it to might remember be a the little first time we for met him Pete. tonight, but he'll because he's just I, been like present for such a long time. It was lunch two point or something. It was a lunch two point yeah. I couldn't decide if it was a lunch or if it was beer and blog. Yeah, one of those. But yeah. I don't usually see him at beer and blog, so it must have been lunch two point oh. Yeah, something. Was oh, that where he did the uh, um, presentation on the omelets? The omelets, yeah, making omelets. Mm. Oh yeah. No, no, no. That was, ignite. that was ignite. Yeah. Okay. And that was yeah. it. Was the last ignite that he did the omelet yeah. presentation? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. It was so, a recent one. Yeah. That was fun. That's the uh, happens what, every three months, four months, something like that. The next one is in July. Yeah, okay. And they get five minutes to talk in 15, 15 slides or twenty slides. I should know this because I didn't ignite presentation too. But you kind of try to block it out after you've done it. <laughs> it's kind of, you get up there and you get through it as fast as you can. 
and then you feel a huge rush of adrenaline and then you just get off the stage and try to put it behind you and for me that involved staying incredibly sober in order to do the presentation and then consuming mass quantities of alcohol once I was off the stage. Mm -hmm. What did you do your presentation on? Um, how to bluff your way through life or a five minute presentation. Oh, oh wow, that's that perfect. was good. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, it was very fun. And I can remember the whole thing now. <laughs> so is it like a, a modern day Toastmasters? Is that the... Is that, is that where you grill somebody, where you roast somebody? No, no, no oh. where you learn how to do public speaking. It's, oh. I, I would say it's a twisted Toastmasters. Yeah. Okay. You know, get up there and, and the PowerPoint slides cycle. Yeah, um, it's like speed public speaking. Every oh, okay. 15 seconds. Oh. So it's okay. like you submit oh, your 20 yeah, yeah, slides yeah, yeah. and they're cycling. You have no control yeah. over Okay, anything. so you have to get through them. Or, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that sounds yeah. fun. Yeah. It yeah. was really fun. They're having another one. Sub a matter oh, submission deadline is tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Now that you brought that up. Thank you for bringing it up. Ignite, Ignite Portland 6. Six. Submission deadline is tomorrow, okay. I think, at midnight. So is there if any, a prize? No, well, the prize is you get to stand up in okay. front of 700 okay. people. Wow. <laughs> at the Baghdad Theater. At the Baghdad okay. Theater. Okay. And say, I was a speaker or something. I don't know. But, um, they don't even let you keep your speaker pass. The little, yeah. That was my very, that was the big disappointment for But me thanks that for that. Um, in fact, we did want to mention the, the, the fact that... Uh, if you're out there and you still have your proposal for a story, if you've for been a story, flipping through something, for a presentation, get it out there. And then the deadline closes and then the judges judge. Well, no, no, no. Before the judges judge, Monday there's a town hall. Oh, and I'm intrigued something different. to see how this is going to go. Ordinarily, the Legion of Tech will sort through all of the proposals that they get and right. choose, I think it's 14, 13 speakers. Plus the one speaker that's from Legion of Tech or somewhere okay. that uh, tells you at Ignite what it is that it is. Okay. But this time they're adding a new component to it and they're having an open hall or a town hall where everyone can go and give their input on what they think of the talks that were submitted. Oh, interesting. And they, Josh wanted to make very clear that they're not going to choose the talks that night, but yeah. they'll listen to what you have to say about them. Oh. So I, I don't know how they can possibly get through all of the... Yeah. I would imagine they oh, probably, they if there's 900 people that attend, 700. They, must, oh, 700, yeah. they must get a lot of submissions. Yeah, oh. they do. They do some pretty good talks. It's good. It's a great uh, free event. you got to get your ticket because it's free and there's some food <laughs> and stuff. But uh, It's, it's uh, free, but you have to get a ticket. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's, free a, is good it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. a lot of things going on. And yeah. I think we'll sponsor it this time as well and have a sponsor video. Yeah. So it'll be all good. Yeah, you definitely got to check it out. Yeah, you There's should. definitely it's a Portland fun. thing yeah. to do. So yeah, sounds fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. So do you guys do a lot of Portland-centric stuff? We Normally we go, and normally when people are on the show, they're they're pretty much plucked right out of the Portland tech community. And so we've got all these different events in common. What kind of communities in Portland do you guys fit into? Um, I would say a lot of the arts communities. Mm -hmm. um, so like just on Wednesday, I was one of the speakers for the Oregon Arts Commission that put on an event called the Art of Collaboration that was mm -hmm. held at Nike. And um, it was pretty cool. It's a sold out event. 300 people attended and they had a wait list and it brought together to try and get the arts nonprofits and also industry and such talking and collaborating. It was a very fun day. Oh, my goodness. The, um, and, um, I don't know how to drink <laughs> malfunction. Sorry. It scared me. It happens in after hours. <laughs> so, and, um, and, yeah, I'd say we're pretty involved in the arts community with yeah. a lot of, um, we, um, We'll host artists that come from out of town a lot mm -hmm. of times at our house and put on dinner parties with a lot of the gallery owners and people from the museums so they can get to know those people and um, and with a lot of the professors at those different schools. And so I'd say that's kind of more, I mean, I think maybe it's because we worked in high tech for so long, John, for mm -hmm. 26 years, and then I was at Intel also for 13 years. and. That we kind of didn't want to do yeah, we're, we're like kind be of, so much in that community. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, not not really in the tech community so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I mean the Mrs. P stuff, I'm, but it's really our own thing. Yeah, and I'm on the advisory board of a lot of the um, art schools mm -hmm. here in town, and um, go to their portfolio events and give the kids feedback and do that actually. 
I'm involved in a big, um, well, actually, it is a, a geeky um, techno community. It's the ACM, which Dr. Strangelove, you're probably <laughs> familiar with. The, oh, snap. <laughs> but the, the ACM is a big engineering organization. Yeah. It's the, um, <laughs> um, and they do hold conferences, and so, but they have one on creativity, and it's mm -hmm. going to be down at... Um, in Berkeley in October, and so huh? I'm on the conference committee to read papers for that, and so I try and keep involved, you know, in in certain parts of the tech community, but it's more about technical people and collaborating with um, artistic people, and so I really like that aspect of the, the technical community mm -hmm. and the, the so scientists and engineers collaborating with artists, so that's like a big thing that I really like to kind of well, stay isn't involved that the, in. I mean, isn't that what we see, like... Portland is kind of, uh, you know, back years ago, you didn't see so much creative and engineering put together, but it seems like in the last maybe 10 years or, you know, arguably last decade or so that you see these, especially lately, especially in the last maybe five years of the very creative and very uh, techie kind of people. Yeah. Um, both on either the same person yeah. or creative and techie people getting together and doing something right. very cool, like right. on the web. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just kind of in general, you know. Yeah. So and I, and it's kind of that new media space, and I'd say that's sort of a mm -hmm. kind of a thing that I maybe got into, I don't know, like 15 years ago or something, and just started kind of really actually going all around the country to these different universities and talking about it and trying to meet all those different people and trying to bring a little bit about back of that to Portland and with some of the gallery owners here and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, just so I, th I think that's more. And then for you, the cooking community is mm. definitely a big part of the yeah. food community. I like to cook and yeah. eat. I like to cook and eat too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, like, most recently, there, there's, like, a dork bot, which is kind of an experimenter's kind of thing. I have yet to, to go. I think they're on Sundays. So, but, yeah, Sunday's um, kind of family day. But I know that they're working on some uh, sound and music uh, thing. Um, Ed Brasky uh, sent me a, a tweet about it. Uh, it looked pretty cool, like, for programming music. And, okay. and I know Ed, who's a very... You know, he's a mathematician, and yeah. and and he does things with like generated music and, and things like that as well. So yeah. I see a lot of those things happening. And, yeah, I used to get to fund know. a lot of really cool grants when I was at Intel with all of these mm -hmm. um, types of people, and one of them was a really great music. Um, it's actually called VisualMusic.org, and it's free software. We put everything in the public domain so that other people could do, you know, like do collaboration over the internet with music and graphics and. That was a really fun one, and it was a an animator, a musician, a computer scientist, and you know, and it's great because you get all these different people on the team, and you realize that you have to have all those people to make all these things happen, mm -hmm. right. you know. And so I think it's really fun when you get all of these different kinds of people and input, and it's because you could never bring the project to fruition without all of those people. So, if this is off track, but uh, you mentioned public it, domain, it, and it, it made, is after hours. Yes, I know. <laughs> And, and it made me think of, I meant to ask earlier, uh, where do you find the little videos? So uh, on, on Mrs. P, she's reading the story, and you're watching her read the storybook, and then it will, it will cut to little visual, little videos. Well, some of them are video. Most of them are actually just um, are still, illustrators. Yeah. They're still okay. photographs. But occasionally, Cinderella is the... Cinderella and Goldilocks, we um, actually the, are from the public domain. Mm -hmm. And so... And we just thought, and like especially the Goldilocks one, we thought was hilarious because they had real bears, <laughs> and we had to cut out the part where they were actually leading them on a little string because it yeah. looked a little bit. We thought we would get some animal rights activists after yeah, us. Yeah, they, they would rightfully be upset about <laughs> yeah. the yeah. rest of that. Yeah, so that one we we got uh, did the license through Creative Commons mm -hmm. from that. It was a public domain title, and then. Um, we did Cinderella with the original Mary Pickford version mm -hmm. of Cinderella that had no, you know, that was um, with no sound, or, you know, it was no talk, it was a silent, a silent, silent. movie, yeah. but it was just so fun, and so we got it from the Library of Congress, you can get a lot of these old, you know, you just have to pay for it and send away, and we got that, and then just cut in the, just certain little segments, so 
but most of them actually just have illustrations. And some of the photographs too are from Library of Congress. Yeah, yeah. Like the bad little boy. Have you seen the bad little boy yet? I haven't. It's I'll a pretty good Mark Twain story. Mental about note to watch a, that one. A bad boy who does all the <laughs> things that a bad boy does, but he never really gets in trouble for it, and he grows up to be a very successful uh, <laughs> politician. It's kind of how it works, right? And I actually wanted to use, um, <laughs> I wanted to use photos of Dick Cheney, and I did research, and there are no photographs. <laughs> It's not that hard to believe, really, but there are no photographs. Speaking of, of Dr. Dick, Strangelove. <laughs> <laughs> no photographs of Dick Cheney when he was a child. He was never a child. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I was thinking, no, I don't and know I, if this is very fit to this TV. We don't be in the over, political. Yeah. Yeah. I said no, no, one would know who he, no, one would, no one would know who he is. <laughs> oh, clink up, clink up, move down, move down. Yeah. Clink up, move down. Oh, come on, it's Portland. You know, what can you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't surprise me that there are no pictures of it. <laughs> yeah. And it's not it like, supports it's not like Dick's making some nice off the news in the last theories week that either. I have. No. Dick and his buddy Rush. Mm -hmm. Sigh. Anyway. Oh, that's what we were going to do tonight. We were going to introduce the hashtag. But, yeah. But then Morgan didn't show up. So, Morgan. So, you got to wait a, wait a week? Lane. Oh, hey, hey. No. You've got to. No. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna say that Morgan should have been here. It so would have been. Do you want to? Do you want a close up, camera guy? Oh, yeah. Camera guy. Yeah. You can do Seriously. it. Okay, quick. No, wait. You don't. Oh. You. <laughs> All right. Explain. Explain it. Seriously. Sometimes when you're having so, have you noticed explain hashtags that. on Twitter? Yes. I'm that explaining. Wasn't an expo I'm explaining now. Start with Twitter.com is a microblogging site. No. <laughs> Twitter.com is a microblogging community. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's it's, it's a. a consciousness stream of insanity radio <laughs> thing for, okay so it, it's insane so the hashtags and we found ourselves because we spend way too much time on twitter sometimes talking and we will use some of the hashtags that we regularly use on twitter mm. like seriously or get off my lawn or it was so worth it mm -hmm. and we've decided that we needed a way to starting to use those in real life hmm? yes mm. even it's sad. I, it is sad i admit that it's you need sad. a life okay I need a life. And I so you need you happens. need a life hashtag. Get a life. No. That's seriously. Life. Should you do seriously? Seriously. Yeah. Which camera? Uh, camera? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, camera Brian guy. Westbrook. Oh, fine. So yeah. we were in the kitchen. Okay. And now it just I'm naturally okay. came. And we went, I'm on seriously. Your... <laughs> get a life. Get off my lawn. And now my fingers hurt from all week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it fits work out. seriously. Seriously. So when yes. you first got on Twitter, did you, I mean. Did I know what a hashtag was? Freak is? out. Yeah. No, when you saw all these things, like, you know. Get naked and run in the woods Friday for a while. Oh, my God. All these different things. Were you kind what of like. Done? Follow Friday came mm -hmm. much later. Okay. I think I've been on Twitter for about it. Well, it was a year in April, oh, I think. Oh, okay. So, okay. You've been on it quite a long time. I don't okay. do Follow Friday. Okay. It's just too much for me to keep up with. But it's I just, like, you know, when I first started, I mean, I haven't been on Twitter all that long. It was mm -hmm. since maybe February. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was watching, because I'm trying to communicate with all these moms and be on these podcasts and things. So you have and, a goal. I think that makes yeah. Yeah, your Twitter yeah. and mine very different. Cause yeah. <laughs> mine, and, it, and it's great because I find these homeschool moms mm -hmm. and these educators and these different people. And then they, like, put a link to me or they write about the mm -hmm. Mrs. P and their blog and or we get on a podcast or whatever. But at first I was like, I have to first like watch for a while to learn all what all these things are. And like, do I need to do these or what do they mm -hmm. mean? You know, and I mm -hmm. was like, what, what is this follow Friday? And it would just be follow Friday at, and it just lists all these people. And I was like, hmm, well, maybe I should do that. You know, I just, <laughs> but it was like, I was just kind of, you know, fascinated by all the, it's like, you have to learn a whole new language. You do. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I hope they stick with this technology for a little bit. Cause right. Probably when I get the language mm -hmm. down, they'll, it'll, it'll, be some new thing there's know? language and then there's etiquette and there are all yeah. these bizarre rules yeah. that you have to abide by like there's do you know what oh have you figured that one out yet no i don't know that so one. when you have a capital o and a capital h it's an overheard so you overheard someone saying something and it was entertaining oh. so you type oh and then what they well, said and then you oh. follow pdx Instead of overheard a retweet. it retweets oh. correct the overheard and then if you follow pdx overheard then it will retweet it so everyone yeah. Gets to know what that is. Yeah. And there are rules because often Mike will say Be before something. Before you get into this, I wanted to ask. So I've got on the graphic on here that you're at 
Mrs. P story time on Twitter, or do you also have your own personal account? But that's your Mrs. P. It just I just do Mrs. P story okay. time. Okay. Yeah, I don't have. I just okay. I'm only on Twitter for Mrs. P. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm so like, at Mrs. P story time. Yep. Yeah. I have to teach her the rules of the overheard. Oh God. Because I'm gonna go have a drink. Are, you guys some have fun. Some people are very <laughs> serious about this, so he'll say something just that I think is hilarious, not because he thinks he's funny, but because it's just something in the course of life or my daughter will say something that's hilarious. And that apparently is not an overheard. What an overheard is, is if someone's not talking to you when they say something. Okay. Uh, So you're like at a restaurant and you overhear the couple next to you. (laughs) Correct. Okay. But I have used overheard all the time. Okay. I have even overheard myself before. (laughs) (laughs) It's not okay. And then there's Follow Friday. And then there's... What are some of the other memes on Twitter? Oh, God. (laughs) I know you hate it when I use the word that way. And it is misuse of the word if you have the technical definition. However... What's what's your favorite? There's Kiala and there's... Put it it up here. There's there's Kiala and there's Melissa Lyon and there's Girl Boners. And Smack My Ass Friday. Smack My Ass Friday. That's right. Okay, I, I, on my group, I no one does this. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of yeah. masturbation talk on your, no. your group. See, well, okay. and I yeah. actually, I like have kept my group very limited. I, I don't want oh. all these followers that are not really relevant to mm-hmm. yeah. the, you know, if I'm going to be talking about, you know, books and stories and, you know, I don't really need to finance, you know, mm-hmm. I, I know some, or people selling all this well, stuff. I really am just targeting this a very... But good, it's kind of an interesting that... question because you have a, you know, a children's site. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Twitter really is skewed more on the adult area. I mean, you'll find moms there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those are the people you want to have conversations with. Yeah. But as Jarvatron points out, you know, there's adult there's conversation very on Twitter yeah, too. And it's, it's kind of tough to... You know, in a public internet place like that, to separate the two well, appropriately, right? Well, I don't have to right? follow them back. That's Correct. true. So that's, that's what true. I cho- I look at each person's Correct. profile and I determine yeah. is this the right <clears throat> uh, is this the right uh, thing for right. children's right. website? And some mm-hmm. of them, when I look at their, I go, I not. actually go to their website and I go, whoop, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, and it's a problem in the workplace yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, even if you're doing professional because you have professional Mm -hmm. companies you know this is social networking right it's all in that same mix right it's all on that same street virtual street corner and then it's like how do you kind of you know filter it out you know for the kid stuff the the appropriate things and the adult things the free speech stuff that people you know um it, it's interesting, and some people have like two accounts. You know, right. they have their kind of their work. Yeah, right. Correct. Right. They have their corporate account. I know. I and created one, so yeah. I don't you know. never tweet from your corporate I identity. Don't. I yeah, don't. Yeah. See, I don't have time to. Well, doing all the Mrs. P stuff, right? Because I'm doing Mrs. P Twitter, and then all the rest of it, mm-hmm. PR, and the marketing, and the business deals, and everything. I, I, there's no way I would have time to even do anything for my you need own. No. <laughs> you, know, like, you need well, a community I, manager yeah well exactly <laughs> Wait, did I, you see there was a job opening That's I think right. she is her community manager yeah. yeah there was one for um Ted Wheeler's office Multnomah mm-hmm. County yeah. Yeah. yeah that's right um, yeah for someone to do uh Twitter mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. Yeah. how do you feel about that for them to use Twitter or well, well not the, just the, Twitter, that wasn't but the only job manager. of the it's community like manager. Twitter, but... Facebook, it's wherever the social networks. Yeah. I happen. think you know because I know they they pulled the job and they were saying it was much more than that. They mm-hmm. probably, you know, I think maybe the the thing if they had just called it like a communications manager, yeah. which is a very yeah. Yeah. Uh, known job that almost everyone in a corporation realizes that you need that, or like mm-hmm. a public affairs type of you know. Yeah. Um, I think it would have, and that would have just been part of your job, right? Because anyone who's doing corporate communications now has to have some kind of you know knowledge of social networking. Usually, I mean, even Intel does. Yeah, but I think I think that. Um... So you think they just titled it wrong? Well, and I think, yeah, but I think people saw it and they said, wow, they're going to pay them $70,000 to Twitter. Yeah. And um, that, because I, I know, well, I actually know. that's the press know, story, right? Yeah, that's I think the it was story. much more than that. It, it is much more than that. actually someone sent me the job to see if I knew any people that would be good yeah. for the job. And mm-hmm. it was, I mean, there was a lot more to the job than that. Right. I, but I think also some of the people who actually do the real social networking community management also would say, well, 
that's not a the PR communications role either. You know, there's more to it. Like you said, there's more to it than that. Yeah. It's like, I guess it's it's the devil's in the details of the description. Right, right, you right. Know, cause, because, you know, you've got tr- the traditional uh, corporate communications, right. PR, which is not social networking and community, but I ma- wonder community the, management. I, would, I mean, I did a corporate... Mm-hmm. PR and um, communications for a big part of my career, um, and I think that probably you can't do that job unless you're thinking about the social networking piece as part of it now. Mm-hmm. Probably not now. Yeah. Right. So I think if you're going into that yeah. field, I mean, if you you have to have some strategy incorporated into what you're doing. So people in that space that. are scrambling I think to so. figure out yeah. what's going on with. Yeah, because that's how you're reaching. I mean, yeah. we looked at all these different ways, like for our website. You know, okay, how do we reach? You know, mm-hmm. how do we reach these moms and these schools and these, and. You know, and when people first said, oh, you got to be on Twitter, I was like, oh, these people aren't going to be on Twitter. And then that is they where are. they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so we were wasting all this money doing and all this. And Facebook as yeah, well. We were doing like Facebook. Hey, do, you have a, um, do you have a Facebook fan page? You know, I'm, I'm, that's my next thing. Um, I've been really concentrating on my group mm-hmm. and making these relationships with the Twitterers first. And mm-hmm. so that, that, that well, will, then you tweet. Yeah. We have a fan page yeah, on exactly. Facebook. And then right. they all go. Right. Because yeah. I'm truly trying to build it up for our, our contest. Cause mm-hmm. I, so I really wanted to have all these homeschool and these different people for the contest but I think that if you don't have um, that you if you're doing any kind of communications now you have to think about all of these things because traditional PR doesn't reach a lot of the audiences and you know a lot of people thinking like oh we're just going to talk to journalists well half the newspapers are gone now yeah you know so and the ones that aren't gone are and they're so overtaxed and so unless you have some really you know, horrendous story, the end of the world story, Mm -hmm. then you can get some coverage. But if you have some feel good story or just some basic news, you're not going to get any coverage. So you have to figure out how to do it in a different way. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's where, where this whole, you know, media comes in, you know, blogs and podcasts, as you've found, I'm sure. So I think if you're interviewing for a job these days, or even if you're in charge of corporate Mm -hmm. communications, you better get with you know the program yeah. and, and figure yeah. that out because otherwise you're gonna you're gonna miss you know what the opportunities out there I to think, reach your I audience. I think part of the argument where the definition changes is that you know I mean there I think there's a tug you know a tug of war right now with people defining this and and some people people I personally respect in in the kind of community manager community space they say you know it comes from the individual. No one really trusts that corporation. Hmm. They trust the person and the reputation. Yeah. And you bring that through with the, but you know, lot, what the yeah. company's but I, doing. But like, I watch, I follow a lot of, like, the different book publishing and mm-hmm. the people at PBS and Scholastic Books and everything. And they actually have a person who is, like, you, know, so you, see, you see the person's face. They have their name, but it'll be, like, they're the Twitterer for Scholastic. Right. Yeah. And so it's not just a corporation they have a, right. actually yeah. assigned. So they're and I doing think it right. Yeah, they're yeah. doing it right. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, so you have to understand the, the, exactly yeah. what you're saying is that, you know, you, you need to have, I mean, Mrs. P, they really I, I they was think they're communicating say. with Kathy. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I was yeah. just going to say, you actually have your, your whole, yeah. you're based around this yeah. individual so this I, person I mean, so the more that she can do or yeah. interact or her and so she character actually interacts goes on all these podcasts and talks absolutely. to these people and you know so i think you know they are probably sometimes thinking they're talking to her yeah <laughs> uh-huh. but you know i'm really writing them <laughs> oh yeah for her <laughs> but um but so I, kathy just doesn't can i just go on as herself and talk yeah. about what she's doing. Oh, she does. Yeah, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Well, not, no, on, on, the not Twitter. on Twitter. She did, but I, I communicate saying, you know, oh, Mrs. Okay. P, you know, I'd love to be on your right. podcast. And then, you know, and then I set it up with gotcha. them. So, and then yeah. she goes on the show. Oh, no. And then she's great. I mean, she'll, I you see. know, and then she'll do all the interviews with them for their blogs and everything like that. But, cool. you know, she's also on the American Life of a Teenager and a reoccurring role and stuff. So she can't be on Twitter all day because she's also still doing TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so It's, it's called an iPhone. That. You know, I they know. take breaks between <laughs> shots. <laughs> I mean, you know, if Ashton and Demi can do it. And you really um, think they're doing it? Yeah, they are. They are. I mean, they're, they're one of the few. Sometimes I think but, Dr. Norman's yeah. a little naive. No, I don't. No, no, no. I think. So you think when, when Oprah and Ellen and no, shows are No, I do coming? not. Okay, okay. No, okay, okay so think... you don't think Oprah and Ellen, but you think that Ashton and Demi yes. are tweeting themselves. <laughs> yeah. What about um, LeVar Burton? Yes. 
I think LeVar Burton's tweeting. He's too. he's a geeky guy. Yeah, I think I agree with you on the LeVar Burton front. I keep missing is I think Twitter I don't keeps follow unsubscribing me to, though, but... to the Jordy LaForge stream. But he was on uh, you know this week in tech on True. podcasts and stuff. I mean he's he's into it. So yeah, yeah. I think LeVar is. Okay. Have you have you met LeVar? Have you? I mean, is the whole reading rainbow kind of thing no uh, no i have not beaten no. i mean i know what reading rainbow is right no, I, I was just wondering read. in your yeah. circles of he was wondering if there was like a speak. children's community no yeah. no you know it's sort of interesting i mean when i worked at hand barbera i saw the hand barbera people uh-huh. <laughs> so i mean we had and i think whatever studio you work in that's kind of your community if you mm-hmm. just spend so many hours there it's kind of like working at intel <laughs> you know you're like there and you're you work a lot and so your community, it's hard to expand your community. And you, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you sort of know some of the other people, obviously, you run into them at different things or whatever, but, you know, typically, like, if you work on a certain TV show, a lot of times then those same people go on to do the next thing together. It's, right. You know, it's very nepotistic in that way. And so... So you're going home every night going, God, that Barney Miller is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand him. And he can take no. that clarinet and... <laughs> Don't disillusion me. I love Barney yeah. Miller. Yeah. How, Hal Linden, right? Yeah. yeah. Hal Linden. Famous clarinet player, too, yeah. as his, well. His in daughter, I have to say, I went yeah. to high school, junior high and high school with his daughter, and and um, we had this horrible biology teacher, and I think that both our parents her, you know, thought that we were just slackers in the class, and so he came, and, and so did my mom, and defended us against this horrible biology teacher and he was a cool guy oh really <laughs> yeah because he, he reamed took, the teacher he totally reamed her and <laughs> like thought that she wow. was a horrible teacher and that we were not bad students we know we were bad <laughs> were you well it could be both it slackers. could be both yeah, yeah. they bring so. the clarinet yeah <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't He's know. A, he I know, but you just keep, you're, you're driving the clarinet into the ground. Well, I mean, that was his gig, and yeah, he got yeah. into TV and stuff, yeah, and, yeah. you know. Yeah. I don't know what There's he's doing a, now. I think he died. Oh. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think, no, I'm pretty sure that he passed away. Wow. Oh, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Normal my... is not capable no, of remembering if people no, are dead or alive. Oh, he... no, you know what? She's doing me right now. <laughs> That's the, what she's the doing. Dead or alive? Like, no, yeah, dead or alive. I think he's no. dead. It's the Eddie <laughs> Izzard we'll, moment. Well, someone will wiki and it'll be like, oh no, I, he's I, retired. No, I really do. No, I think she's right. I think he did. I think, yeah. I, think yeah. I remember being ago. sad about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, Me we too. need to get the dead or alive segment. Okay, well, that's what's going great. We can look show. it up like right now, or someone yeah. will correct. Someone us will tell us momentarily. So that I'm the guy who is convinced that everyone's dead, right? Oh, okay. And 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 it's always like, well, this person, oh no, they're really old. I, no, I heard that they died. Actually, it's like, funny and, that we're and they're mentioning like, Barney Miller. In Florida in this retired, context. right? Because <laughs> turns out they're dead. No, no, no. They're, Mike, it's the opposite. It's always he always thinks people are dead and yeah. they're really alive. He yeah. brought home a Barney Miller DVD for me. He's like, look, I got you a Barney Miller Whoa. DVD, and I was so excited. And then I can't remember who it was. Yeah, he was dead though. <laughs> but you thought it. But you thought. It's not Abe Vigoda because he's alive. I know. Oh See, yeah. Oh yeah. There, you would there's think a guy that he would be yeah. dead. Yeah. But he's, he, he's alive. I thought he was alive. dead when they were making that show. Yeah. And, yeah. and whoever it was, whoever it was, he was just like, well, it's so sad that he's not with us anymore. And I was like, I just saw a movie with him, and I can't remember yeah. who it was. It was uh, Jack Sue, who died during the the filming of the show. Yeah. Well, not uh, like during no, no, the no. show, but he... you you no, it was someone who is currently alive. Oh, I and you thought know. they were dead, and I had just seen them in something. It was just oh hell, <sighs> that was a long story for no payoff. Exactly, because <laughs> I can't remember who it was now. And Kemi Chaos, <laughs> I think she died. It's Host scary. extraordinaire. Exactly. Was... She did web vision. And did anyone determine? I think I really do think Hal Linden is dead. But who? Oh, I, I don't know. Okay, so I... was that your favorite TV show then? Actually, yeah, very yeah? much so. Yeah, okay. I really great, I love that. Was that was a great what show was... back in the day. Yeah, it was. It was a good very show. well done. So, and Cammy actually was a big fan in reruns. She didn't watch it was live in, back yeah. in the day, like I did, but as a kid. But um, I can't really remember what like my favorite TV shows were that, that were on when I was a kid. I don't think too. there were a lot of good TV shows yeah. that were on when I was a kid. So if you I played watched jazz a lot of really good in a repeats. stage band in the seventies. You played the theme to Barney Miller. Oh, as one of your two. Okay. I mean, oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. There was a lot of great TV. I mean, the the the, the whole, um, you know. All in the family. Oh, all yeah, that. those were some groundbreaking. Mod I mean, just died. Yeah. I know, I know. So, okay, yeah. there's some. And there was another show. We're totally in the Dead and Alive yeah. section now. I know. Yeah. It's fun. 
<laughs> I'm sorry for all those people who were dead, but you know, no, but she, she, yeah. she just, and they were all like golden girls, golden girls, and I kept yeah. tweeting, and then there's Maud, yeah, 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 <laughs> which was a theme song, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, and like you know, and that was really the groundbreaking show. I, I know. Mean, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that show. In fact, we just heard an interview on NPR, and they were talking about how on the show that Maud had an abortion. And we were like, oh, wow. First. And I was like, yeah. oh, do you remember that? Well, there's Norman Lear, right? I know. And then we were like, Norman oh, Lear God, was, yeah, yeah, that's right. And it was like this totally, I mean, they just did not ever talk about stuff like that on television. I, I seem to recall He that, always yeah. just pushed the envelope. You know, he is still alive, Norman Lear. And he is mm-hmm. just amazing. Really? He is, yeah. He has a, God, I mean, he a very involved must be coming in up there. people for the American He way wasn't that old when you worked there, really? was he? Well, he always, he's one of those people who, kind of like my dad, always had the white, gray hair, yeah. right? So... But he's probably, he's, I think, probably in his 80s now. Okay. Like yeah. He, yeah. But um, he's just one of those people, just nicest person and also still very involved. He has this organization, People for the American Way, that's very involved in freedom of speech. Yeah. And, but, yeah. and he still does, actually, he does really cool, like, um, he has a company that does kind of branding um, and licensing. So he's taken a lot of, you know, like all these companies kind of merged and he's taken mm-hmm. a lot of the old great things like the princess bride and stuff and they kind of taken taken the rights back to some of those movies and then is putting them out in you know different venues or you know kind of taking so they they bought it back from the studios from the network yeah well because the company that we had the because we had the whole home video company and everything it got bought and sold like Mm -hmm. five different times and then all those things sort of just get and then they get just, you know, thrown in someone's library and then they never do anything with it. So right, then right. he's taking those things back out the and companies. going, yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's take The Princess Bride, which is a great movie yeah. that, you know, that the company produced and everything. And um, and then taking that out and saying, oh, it's the 25th anniversary or whatever. And, you know, re-releasing them and things. And, um, you know, an artist that I admire who is also dead, actually, um, did that, I think, Very starting funny. in the 80s. Uh, Frank Zappa started buying back ah. all his masters from the record yeah, companies, yeah, right? Yeah. And so he, all his old masters are all owned by his family, by wow. his family trust. Yeah. So all, and he, you know, took the money that he was making and went back to the companies. And, you know, they were just sitting in a vault. Yeah, they just, just right. sit They there, wouldn't right? re-release, they right. wouldn't remaster, you know, and he's like, right. look, I want to buy back all my... Yeah my master so i believe most all of his music is owned by mm-hmm. his family trust are they going to re-release it? oh no, they have been it was oh, one of the zappa's yeah. birthday today oh one of the kids i can't remember which one hmm. dweezil or no, ahmet i think it was ahmet hmm. but i'm not positive someone could tell me so i saw it on twitter so it has to be true <laughs> <laughs> i learn so much on there every day i'm always like wow yeah. <laughs> i mean it's just it's so, it is kind of it's interesting it's really a great yeah. misinformation that yeah ed says it was moon unit oh i'm sorry oh, oh, moon that was, <laughs> that's the girl yeah thank you i didn't ed. say one of the boys i said one of would the you kids. know ed would be a Zappa thank you ed follower. of course right he always comes off as a big Zappa fan. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes, that Ed. Big Zappa fan around. So I just realized <laughs> while we were talking about Princess Bride, what Mrs. P kind of reminds me back of uh, in, a, in a much updated way. But did you ever watch the fairy tale theater? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I mean that in the most compliment. We, we own the box set of fairy tale yeah. theater. So yeah. I really, really love those shows. Yeah, when we were, you know, coming up with the concept of what the site would look like, we were thinking Alistair Cook, you know. Uh, oh, right, mm-hmm. right. And yeah, Masterpiece, Masterpiece Theater, Theater. Yeah. or somebody, you know, kind of, except that, you know, we wanted to have her Warmer. have that. Yeah, well, I have to ask you guys, have you that, heard my impressions? And that quirky My character. crack impressions during After Hours, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, I could do, you know, a little Alistair, a little Tom Brokaw. Oh, there you go. You know. Oh, God, hold on, let me take my headphones out. <laughs> Chuck Todd was reading the three bears. I see Kelly isn't here to laugh. You, you're supposed to, like, do the comedy, right. you know, well, you're the ringer in the audience. Laugh. laugh. Yeah. 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 Um, um, no. Your father, Carrie. No, 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 we Mr. Walken. Thank you. <laughs> no, but yeah, you you need those celebrity uh, yeah. impersonations. Well, and, and, the Alistair know, Cook. And, the, and that's what's great about like Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Alistair Cook, though, not yeah. the no, real. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> no, because you you have to have that quirky character, that quirky part of your personality to make it like that. You know, that kind of bohemian, lovable aunt that mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you don't really want to claim as your own family, but you can't wait to go over to their house, mm-hmm. right? Because you know they're so fun and different and. 
So, so what's it's not it's no longer called Masterpiece Theater. It's called what now? Now they've changed it. They've <laughs> updated know. it. Hmm. And this is this oh. is both exciting for me. Oh and God! Because because Cue the new the music, right? Oh Lord! <laughs> I don't mind. He, he's in there. Just is pull he? him out. <laughs> Pull them out. Camera guy, camera guy. The new narrator <laughs> for the updated version. I can't remember the new name. This is David Tennant as Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Oh. David Tennant is, is the new narrator oh. for the updated Masterpiece oh Theater on OPB. Pull out his or on pants. PBS. I'm not, See if he's anatomically His correct. pants do not come down. But I can tell you that I'm very disappointed Look at that his little jacket. the back of his jacket is not pinstriped. Oh, but okay. the front of his jacket oh. is pinstriped. Oh, kind of cheap on the cheap there, huh? Yeah, I was a little <laughs> disappointed. But this did come all the way from the Doctor Who Museum in Cardiff. So That's pretty cool. Canary. Yeah, you Jeez. may. What? Oh. How often do I, I have a legitimate from... reason to pull out my David Tennant doll? That I didn't have yeah, to play the music. I, so. That's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so he's he's going to be part of Masterpiece. It's theater. no longer oh, called Masterpiece get, Theater. They're going to get a whole new audience now. That's right. Yeah. No, I mean, this is this is like this really smart marketing. It really is. I can't remember. It, they're calling it something else to make it That's sound. That's from Doctor Who. I know. Yes, I know. That's, That's from, from Doctor Who. I mean. These it's are it's all going to be sneakers. just like. And I'd like to point out to, to John, who was on last week's show, that David Tennant is cool and his sneakers are tied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I, Let's just put that up right. We had a... It's all going to end in the TARDIS and the Daleks. Or he, Daleks he had that or thing where you right? think it's cool and you don't tie your sneakers. Oh, yeah. And, and you wonder, like, how you don't trip. Yeah. It drove me crazy the whole time. I was just like, <laughs> just hold it down. I'll tie your sneakers for So you. I have a question. If he if he hosts this, whatever, Neo. Do you have a question for David Tennant? Yes. If you okay. host the Neo. <laughs> if you host the. Oh, my God. I can't do a David Tennant. You got to do his voice. Though. I can't. So if he hosts the. Can you um, do a David Tennant impression? Yeah. Weird. Not even scary. No. <laughs> okay. So if he hosts the Neo Masterpiece <laughs> Theater, my question to David Tennant is, will you have your thick Scottish accent? Um, I'm going to answer that for him. Okay. <laughs> no, I think he needs to whisper in your ear to what? tell you the answer, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Little David Tennant. <laughs> so cute. Oh, Mr. Tennant. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I'm not going to tell him that I'm running away with you because that would upset him. <laughs> Okay, hold on. He says yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Good. It's decided. <laughs> and if he if he doesn't do that, then then he's gonna have to answer to me, and that will see if we had like a little Mrs. P doll, we could sit here and have a little doll, That's and we what, could be like, we could play. Oh, David Tennant, what's your favorite book? You, oh, my well, favorite book is this. Well, there is the Mimi. <laughs> there is a Mimi doll. There is That's a true. Yeah. We could yeah, get a red marker. A That's right. true. And, yeah. and you have to, but you have to get some paint. Well, we could just put some glasses. We could like block out the eye makeup and then just put some cute little red glasses on her and and paint her hair. You guys need a Mrs. P doll. Yeah. It's merchandising. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I could do that. If you get me one of the yeah. uh, Mimi dolls, I could make it a Mrs. P doll. Okay. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. But uh, yeah, so then they could talk about books. They could have their own show. They could, uh, David oh, Tennant oh, and, oh, Mrs. and Mrs. P dolls. Oh, could and get have... a Jordy LaForge, too. Okay. Why? With the visor. Have Rainbow. 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 We could have like, the little dolls, and they could have their own little podcast. Right. And everyone would watch. Oh. And it would be like the updated um, Mr. Bill kind of. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> it would be cute. So would be she really, worked in TV. Really awesome. Not just TV, in <laughs> comedy. And all you need is a popsicle sitcom. stick. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh. And we could have like, and then we could have Hello. like, a, just open the book. The book could be the background, mm -hmm. and then that could, and it could just be in front, and then you could zoom in on the words, and it could be really back, cute. Back, <laughs> way back in like the late '90s, when the when you know online video started really kind of happening, but you know everybody was on dial-up and crap. Oh, yeah, you know, it was yep, yep. pretty bad stuff. I have very bad QuickTime copies of this this kid who one summer took all his Star Wars figures oh, and that was did, so awesome and did i wish i had high quality versions of this but he essentially did the star wars pulp fiction oh, quentin mm -hmm. tarantino mashups and they're mm -hmm. absolutely hilarious oh, that would be I mean, and i think he probably they've got, got a lot yoda of <laughs> and they've got they've got you know all the and it's essentially all those yeah. kenner star and wars you know, yeah. characters yep. and um and it was well, it was back when the very first star wars version one you know that the, the whatever phantom menace yeah. came yeah. out so they had like mace 
window yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was oh and he used like all he used sound clips and he was using like for mace window he was using like clips from pulp fiction yeah. of sam jackson oh you know gosh, yeah. i'm gonna come in yeah i mean it was <laughs> hilarious i mean this kid just just did these like little oh, yeah. films these oh, little five minute films that like just that. was absolutely politically incorrect and absolutely yeah. hilarious i think those are so yeah, funny and, um, yeah did you guys ever see or hear about the kid that did the scene by scene recreation of Star Wars. He and With his Legos? friends. No, oh. in like real, like Ask he and his it? friends, and they no. like did, and they set up all the scenes. And we saw a clip. They have it on YouTube. And it's like ten minute clip, and they actually was it Star created, Wars? Yeah. Was it the ASCII one? The one that was, was done it Star in Star Wars? And then they showed it here, and they were going around the country because Steve. Um, um, it was Indiana Jones. Oh no, it was Jones. Indiana Jones. Okay. Oh. Oh, so never mind. Sorry, it was yeah. Indiana Jones, but still, it was same like difference. Very cool. kids. Indiana Jones, yeah. Star Wars. But same. Mm-hmm. Steven mm-hmm. Spielberg saw it, and then like, um, like well, give yeah, him a three, uh, well, three no, movie deal. Want, no, wanted to like help. <laughs> Produced it and um, released it. Yeah, oh, cool. and they went around the country yeah. and did these, you know, lectures and stuff. And it's like for these kids, like you imagine. They worked like, on it a, for like five years. Yeah, like you and your best friend, you're in junior high and high school, and oh, this is what you do. You know, mm-hmm. and so it was like, like a live action thing. Like yeah, yeah, and they I recreated like every scene and all the special effects. You know, like that how yeah. kids would make them, and it was really. It, I was so it actually impressed. was pretty good. Yeah, that they could actually come up with how to make all this stuff, and that, that was, was very like cool. that's how they played. You know, it's like okay, this weekend we're doing this. Yeah, and, this is oh, the scene. Yeah, right. yeah, and so and they let him, you know, because there's all the was the, one scene with a kid in the garage with a lightsaber. <laughs> Oh, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's I got that mixed up too. Like I say, once again for John yeah. Renan, in, Indiana Jones, Star yeah. Wars, same difference. But they had like that. when when the um the boulder tumbled in mm-hmm. through the. I mean, it was like amazing how these kids recreated. Was this. it like a giant paper mache? It rock? was. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. How I it was new. Yeah. It was, well, yeah. I mean, but if you look at the stuff that your kids, our oh, yeah. kids, have. I know. To, to play I with today to I make know, their yeah, little stupid totally. films right, 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 and you're right. like oh my god you know learn a little yeah. animation and stuff on the yeah, computer and it's like you know I mean I yeah. you know we didn't have digital video back no. in the day you yeah. know it was like I remember making you were lucky if you had yeah, video I remember making like a video for my parents at their house to that song our house is a very very fun oh, yeah. house mm-hmm. and but I didn't have any sound equipment or anything and I had one remember those VCRs where you pulled out the big thing from mm-hmm. the VCR and you carried it around with you. It, it wasn't like a weighed. camcorder. It was the... It was like the part of the VCR. Yep. Before <laughs> and, they had, Yeah, yep. and then you would put it and have this shoulder strap and the thing weighed like a freaking ton. Yeah. And then so you're trying to hold this thing and the camera. Um, and the camera and was this, big and heavy too, and right? Because mm-hmm. like it wasn't big. a CCD. It yeah. wasn't solid state. And it was the t- original exactly. tube yep. camera. Exactly. And then yep. I had... Um, and But I wanted to have music to this video and so then I had my little tiny tape recorder hooked on to my belt and I would cue it up and I did this all in one shot and I even was able to get in my little Volkswagen Rabbit into the sunroof. In the and, Volkswagen and, Rabbit, you yeah. had to add that. I know. Right? <laughs> well, it was because I had this cute little car and um, I actually then got into the and stood up and my friend drove it so I could like go all the way down the street and I did yeah. this all with the music and I had to be really, there's a lot of ingenuity and it actually came out, I showed and you and it's like I don't know amazing. how you could have pushed all the buttons to I get know. it to start and stop <laughs> on, at the right time. I think I had my friend, we like all were it, it, it was, was pretty very, amazing. You know, and that, I opened all the doors in the house, and you never, I mean, I had And this Spielberg whole thing saw this and plotted. gave you a three movie. Yeah, that's how she right? got no, the job no. at Norman Lear. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, no. <laughs> but, you know, I had to really think this through to, to yeah. have it come to fruition. You know, it was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know. You had to be like, more clever back then, actually, I think. Yeah. Kids got it. Kids easy. have to work they to be do. creative now because yeah, there's so much handed easy. to them yeah. that in order to actually use the creative part, right, right, they have to think of. Something. Hey, when I did audio back in the day, back in the day, those kids, when you we had a reel to reel, and yeah. when we spliced, we actually yeah, used a razor I, I blade. Yeah. Remember that? We did too. Yeah, yeah. you know, it was like, um, and it was so cool, old school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, we're bumping exactly. up against an hour. We're getting, but in yeah. but in honor of Mrs. P, I would like where we're, normally we would ask someone to do what's your we favorite drinks, TV show or what's we? your favorite movie. I want everyone to tell us what your favorite book is. Should we do drinks first, really quick? No, it's I mean, the we same got thing. Fifty three. Well, what what do we what do we do? Or drinking the the big pitcher of tiki drink. <laughs> it's just you don't care anymore. It's like freaking Kool Aid. It's the same thing. You need to market it. Like it's, put it in a, like a it's little Kool Aid like packet. It's, it's like Candy Chaos's 
tiki mixed drink here. Just it's cranberry packet. juice, pineapple juice, some vodka, coconut rum, crap. pineapple rum, and uh, I, and dark rum. I play the music. Though. All right, good. never mind. No, I want I want to start with the studio audience. Podcast is going down on two, and, two, two. <laughs> And I want everyone to guys have no clue. No. <laughs> everyone to tell us no, what their great. favorite book. A favorite book. Favorite book. Now this is where we need to get sponsored by Audible, right? Like all those yeah. other cool kid podcasts, right? Okay. Like of all time, Catch Twenty Two, Joseph Heller. Oh, very nice. Very nice. How about kids book though? Let's, oh, let's there, ask there we go. What's your favorite kids book? The Boxcar so- Children. We're reading the Boxcar mm. Children right now. Very nice. We are. Yeah. yeah. I am. Oh, okay. Kids book. <laughs> I can't choose a kids book. You can't. Mm-mm. Oh come on. Okay, choose a regular book then. Nothing. Not kids. I like Atlas Shrugged. No, you're reading the Atlas Shrugged. I read that like a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't read books anymore. It comes around. It's <laughs> a kid. <laughs> exactly. You know what's I sad? can't. I can't. I I majored in film and I can't sit through books anymore. Yeah. I think my brother who works in a bookstore. At, at a certain point, he just got so overwhelmed with books that he stopped reading them. Hmm. I think he's reading books again, but yeah, yeah, there was a long period of time where he just couldn't because I'm a, I'm it, it was so, like he, it was like being boat. at work. I'm in the same boat. Okay, Doctor okay. Normal favorite. I'm in book. the same boat. Uh, you still have to pick your favorite book. Oh jeez. Um, can you come back to me? I, um, We're going in order. I. Nonfiction or children's book? <laughs> yeah, children's pick book. a children's book. Oh, that is easy. I actually will. From from when I was a kid to today, The Cat in the Hat oh, is yeah. my favorite book. That's, That's a good book. One. That is a That's, very good one. I mean, there's just yeah. and and you know other there's other Doctor Seuss. You just can't yeah, yeah. beat Doctor Doctor Seuss. Yep. I mean, just it's pretty hands wonderful. Down. Yeah. And I, I would say the second though that came out when right around the time I was. A, Kid, the baby was where the wild things. Oh yeah, are, that's a great was, one. Came They're out. making yeah. that into great a movie. Illustration, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, was very exciting when I was a kid. But I kind of, I kind of was the tail into that baby boomer cat yeah. in the hat, yeah. Seuss generation. So yeah. he was still releasing stuff through the '60s and early '70s, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, love his stuff. Yeah, they're, they're a little twisted. Some oh, of the yeah. stuff is. Mm-hmm. I saw a great sculpture. There's a, uh, an artist in town, um, Todd. Todd. They changed his name, but it was Todd oh, Kurtzman, but now Kurtzman, he goes by something yeah. else. And we were at his <laughs> the house. The artist formerly and, known as yeah. Todd. And he had uh, <laughs> this sculpture, and it looked like a Dr. Seuss head mounted on the wall. Yeah. Like a trophy. Like the head of Seuss? No. I was, or one I of the characters. Like, one of the okay. characters, yeah. And, <laughs> no, Cam. I was disturbed for a moment. I figured that Todd <laughs> had made this. And I, I said, well, you know, who, who did that? And he goes, you got one guess. It was, it was one said, of his. And I said, Dr. Seuss? Oh, I said, yeah. Oh, wow. Have, we have a book. It's The Secret Art of Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, oh. He did do a little sculpture. Yeah. He does. He does. And they'll have the, and they have the, um, like the, the Seussian animals with the crazy right. horns. And yeah. there's some fantastic stuff. He was an amazing artist as yeah, well. I saw really something was. recently. I can't remember what it was. It was some media. And, and it was just like. You know, you could tell it was influenced. You know, you could. It's that look, and yeah. it's hard to describe. It's hard to pin down that look, but it's that Dr. Seuss illustration, that look, those beings. You know, yeah, yeah. And there's a just, whole world. You know it when you see it. You're like, yeah. oh wow. You know, there's yeah. You know, which great artist. Book? Uh, kids' book. Uh, James and the Giant Peach mm-hmm. is a pretty, you know, pretty favorite. Uh, Stuart Little too. I, I think. Oh yeah. I like yeah. the adventures, you know, that those characters would go on. Yeah. Yeah, those are probably. Yeah, and I love Stuart Little. Yeah, yeah Stuart Little was I good. Was, yeah, yeah. I, ha- I had to get a little mouse when I was little. <laughs> I wanted to look my own Stuart Little. But, and I also loved Charlotte's Web. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I liked all the ones where the one. where the animals seemed like they were real. They they mm-hmm. were like people, mm-hmm. you know. Because mm-hmm. I always actually thought that all the animals that I had were like that. Yeah. <laughs> that I could talk to them. <laughs> But those were great books. Yeah, those were good. There's so many good children's books, though. So. My favorite children's book is Shel Silverstein's um, Where the Sidewalk Ends. Yeah. Mm. And that I, I make any excuse I can to read that to my daughter. Or there's a book called, and it was an old little golden book that I used to read. And I read it so much it fell apart. And it's called Raggedy Ann and the Cookie Snatcher. Oh. I and I absolutely love that book. It's where 
she bakes cookies for all the dolls that live oh, in her house. Oh, that would be a good one. And then the dog next door eats them all. Oh. Because the dolls or the, the cookies? Dog, the dog. The dog the, eats the dog all the cookies. Eats, yeah. All the cookies. And, yeah. then, and then they go looking and they try to find out who ate the cookies. And the only thing they can do is think to go to the dog next door, Peterkins, to get him to try to track down who ate the cookies. <laughs> and he says, I ate the cookies because no one ever makes anything for me. And... It's just a very... I love that book. What's, and, Kay, what's Kay's favorite, favorite book? Our daughter. Um, yeah. do, you, do you know? She's got several. Yeah, uh, she right does. now, Right she now, any books. of the Magic Treehouse books, she's very into the Magic yeah. Treehouse. Um, she loves Giraffes Can't Dance. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Um, by, I think, Guy Parker Reese, I think, wrote that. And um, she really enjoyed... There was the book called The Valentine Cat that was written about a cat at her school. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's and I can't fun. remember the author's right. name. Uh, I can't remember. Um, hmm. Yeah. The but my Escapades favorite, of Sooty the Cat. My favorite uh, uh, grown-up book is mm-hmm. Hard-Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. I'm sorry, Hard-Boiled what? Chow Yun Fat <laughs> what? <laughs> Hard-Boiled Wonderland and yes. the End of the World. That's a kid's book? No, it's a, it's <laughs> no, it's not a it's not a kid's book. It's by Hariki Marikami. Cuz that's a great movie, Hard-Boiled. It's not it's, a, it's you know. not the movie. <laughs> No. Yeah, like a lot of you know Hong Kong action, man. That's a classic. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> okay, I you don't should know what read. you're talking about. You, but it's because you don't read. I don't have time to. Doctor Normal is not a reader. <laughs> it's gotten so bad. I have no time for TV anymore. I'm just like. No. But you know what I will say is that that every night when we put our daughter to bed, all three of us sit in the room yeah. oh, and read nice. whatever story we're reading yeah. together. So at yeah. least he gets. That's story a great time. family time. Yeah. That is the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Just to have that family, you know, it's like the same thing, you know, they used to do that with reading or yeah. the radio or right, something right, like that. Right. You know, I did, I actually, I kind of got bored and started downloading like old radio podcasts. So yeah. I'd be like, yeah, you know, I'm an, you can do the hashtag, get off my lawn, you know. Um, I don't even have to say it. it just, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just going to start putting the hashtag, I'm just going to start hashtagging and then not putting anything behind have, it. I should have got that. <laughs> twitter account right just to get, get off, off my, my lawn, lawn. go see if it's there oh i'm sure it's, i don't i think we have enough twitter taken. accounts though yeah. yeah but uh you know it just kind of takes you back to this and it's so imaginative because it's all audio and you listen to how these guys acted you know and they, right. they were really masters i mean you hear oh, them yeah. breathe and you kind of hear them oh, yeah. you know mm-hmm. do, and and they're, it's all intentional they make all but, the fun sound effects exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Um, there was a movie and I can't remember what it was and it was the the whole making of this radio oh yeah and they had all the Foley artists and they had and the they guy showed, with the oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I wish that. I could remember what yeah. that was really good I think like William Macy was in it yes he yeah. was. That um, was I can't remember the name of the movie but I can totally picture yeah. the whole setting yeah all right I think yeah, we're kind of in that sp- I mean you know with technology with blogs podcasting the things you're doing online i mean that's kind of a new yeah it is like that space i mean yeah. it's kind of we're kind of Making coming up, it up with as it as we go along yeah exactly yeah. you know um we should say web visions did you mention the web visions i did on the the tech edition but yes uh, on thursday and friday strange of live will be broadcasting from web visions from Nine to three, I believe, from the yeah. exi- exhibition hall. So if you're going to be at Web Visions, come and say hello. Come and talk to us. Come and tell us why you're there. And then Friday night we will join in studio by Nate Angel, who's going to have some... Our hundredth episode. <laughs> again. We're just going to keep doing the hundredth episode um, again. Who's going to have some really gruesome uh, bruising, I think, around his eye uh, when he comes into the... I, I, I don't even know. Oh, did you know. miss it? No, oh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't well, know. it's going to be gnarly. I hope he's not dead when he comes in dead or alive Nate Angel yeah you decide oh that's terrible <laughs> oh, well. I'm sorry Twigs I really don't wish your that's husband awful. ill um thank you guys so much <laughs> <laughs> on that, on note. that note, <laughs> goodbye thank you so much for joining us oh, it was awesome us. it was a lot of fun thank you alright Good night, everybody Good night. Good night. <laughs>